Okay, so Guillaume, our resident Frenchman, has been complaining recently that he can't find a good croissant anywhere in London. So what we're going to do is buy a range of different uh, sort of qualities of croissant and we're going to have him do a taste test without knowing which is which. And as an added bonus, Thomas and I are going to bake our own special croissants for the mix. But first, in order to do that, we have to learn how to make them. So let's get started. Okay, Thomas, here's the plan. Basically, Guillaume's been being really sort of snobbish, like, oh, I can't find a good croissant anywhere in London. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to buy, like, different levels of croissant from different places. So we'll get a cheap one, like a medium one, and a pretty decent, you know, like a French bakery one. And on top of that, me and you are both going to bake our own croissants in order to see sort of how we can do and whether he can tell the difference. Okay. Doesn't it take, like, three days to make a croissant? What's three days? Surely we can just go to Paris in that time. You can go buy French flour from France. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, if you want to go buy the freshest French flour, then that's that's that's, that's allowed in the competition. That's the key, apparently. That's what my dad says. That's why all our food is so terrible. They <laughs> save all the good butter for themselves. Oh, oh dear. Well, I'm sure that we'll be able to find the freshest ingredients for our croissants. Yeah, definitely. All right. Good luck. Okay. Okay, so I've just caught up with Thomas and I think that I have some good news because Thomas is just using Google to find his recipes. But I have an edge, you see, because I've been using YouTube as well and I think I've found some good stuff. Have a look. Here, I've been watching a Gordon Ramsay video. It's not too specific, so it doesn't have like amounts and stuff, but actually the method that he lines up is pretty decent. So I'm going to be sort of keeping up some of the tips from this in mind. Then. When, uh, when we started this challenge, this video came straight to mind because I'd already seen it, but it's from this YouTube channel called My Name is Andon, and uh, he makes some good croissants in the video, and he has a decent recipe. But he also mentions this guy called uh, Alex, and he makes another recipe which I've seen, and this guy's French, so, you know, you have to trust the French when it comes to making croissants. So I think that this is the recipe that I'm going to go with in the end. Also, I've just found out that for the first few minutes of the video, Tom's has been filming vertically. I know, I know, what a disaster. You have to excuse it, what can I say? But from now on, he's going to be filming horizontally as it should be. To make the best croissant, you need the best recipe. And where else do you find the best recipe? But from the fountain of knowledge, the internet. Here, I have found a beautiful recipe from Weekend Bakery. We do it more than once. Okay, so definitely have a practice run. We need at least three times. Definitely don't, don't want to do it less than three times, as I'll probably just do it twice. The butter, that seemed important. 82% butter, fat butter, and follow the recipe. Okay, let's go buy the ingredients. Just wake up, it's seven in the morning. Let's get out the fridge. Form the square butter. Time for the bashing. Let's grab the rolling pin. Let's go smash it, smash it. Okay, so we've made butter square, we've made the dough square, now comes the folding, and this is where it's all gonna go horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. But this is our practice run, so let's see what happens. Without the last time to the specs specified. Now I'm going to do my letter fold, which I did not know was a fold, but can just fold it to the third, and then you fold it over. I think actually this one needs to be a little bit longer. Voila! All right, I'm even speaking French. This is going to go really well. Okay, there we go. That's the final layer. And into the fridge. As you can see, we put it in the fridge. So we've just layered the, the butter into the dough. And uh, I actually have to say, there does seem to be layers. It's a good sign. I'm not going to be 
happy with it yet, but it's a good sign. Here we are, day two of complete, rest my darling. Okay, so I've got myself a shopping list and now I'm off to the supermarket to just buy off the ingredients that I need and we'll be set to go. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, um, so what? So, let me guess why you've called me today, Ian. Why? Why? Guess. You couldn't find fifty-five French flour. Oh, I just, I just settled for the regular old Tesco's plain flour. You can't do that. You need to get the proper flour because oh, otherwise, no. <laughs> you've got to get the right. It's all about the concentration of protein. If you have the wrong concentration of protein, then it won't fold well. Oh, uh, no, you're deep, you're deep. I think you're reading too deep into it, Thomas. I just no, the website it. I read assured me the protein was key. Oh well, if if, if, the, website, if the website says though, then I I stand corrected. I'll on my second batch. On my second batch, I'll I'll get some some better flour for it. On the next batch, I'm going to order the 55 French flour from the internet because you can't you just can't find it. I tried to buy it from Sainsbury's and I asked the guy. I asked, the, I went to the guy, I said, do you have 55 French flour? And he looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, how are the well, flour ones coming along? So yesterday I made the dough and, and put it into a pancake shape and let it rest in the fridge. And then I woke up this morning at 7.40, which was uh, early. Mm. And <laughs> okay, and then I, um, so then I, I went downstairs and I, uh, so basically, the big you had to, I had to roll out the square of dough, and you had to roll out a square of butter. And the mm. butter was really fun. I got to bash it about. It was fun to <laughs> bash the butter. But apparently, I woke everyone up. But that's fine because they always wake me up anyway. And and then the problem was is that butter was a great material to work in. Dough was not, and it was what, very hard. What was, what was happening with your dough? It was just very hard to get it into a square shape of the right size. I only ask because I've been having dough problems too. Um, so this morning I actually, I'm a few steps behind you. I made the dough this morning. Um, yeah. It's, it's currently in the oven resting. Um, and so, but I found that my dough was, it was like not really sticking together at first. So I had to add like a little bit more milk and water to it. No, I didn't have to do any of that. Mine oh. just ran like clockwork. Oh, no, the other problem I had was I didn't have active yeast. I had instant dry yeast. No, I didn't have instant yeast. I had active dry yeast. So I had to activate the yeast first. Oh, wait, you have to do that? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait, do you do you not have active yeast? Do you have instant yeast or active yeast? I have instant yeast. Wait, what do you how do you activate it? No, if you have instant yeast, it's fine. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I have active yeast, so I have to activate it. Ooh. Ooh. That would have been so you scared me for a second there. Oh, that would have been so funny. Well, I'm I'm gonna stop the recording here. Uh oh, yeah. I'll catch up with you at the next stage. Okay, so here's my conclusion from this sort of first run. 
butter was fine, the step with the butter, I think that was actually pretty good. But the dough was the biggest problem and uh, I think I just need to find a better recipe for the dough on my second run and we should be good to go. Okay, so I've just had my second attempt at doing the layers and it's all right, you know, it's, it's not terrible. Um, yeah, so the dough is still a little bit sort of crumbly and stuff, but it's staying together this time, which is what you want. And I've, I've got my layers, so we're gonna come back in the morning, I guess. Uh, or actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll them out either tonight or in the morning and then we're just gonna see how it is you know yeah okay so this morning I rolled out the croissant dough that I had and it was just not working it was crumbling to bits but you know I just tried to get some croissants out of it and see what I can do and so I rolled them up and I made like a pseudo pan au chocolat as well to go with it just for fun um, and yeah, I mean, there were no layers in the dough, so I didn't expect much. Basically, what ended up happening was it just all melted, the butter, and it just completely flattened in the oven. Um, so yeah, I ended up with more like a cookie than a croissant, but it still tastes like croissant. <laughs> Now I know for the second run what I need to do is just make the dough more sort of stretchy and liquid so that it's easier to work with. Yes, it's looking really good. You can't get any longer pretty much. The problem is the thickness at the top is not quite long and wide enough. See, we have our dough rolled out, made our notches on the right, now we need to make the notches on the left. This has not gone that well, but okay. We've uh, cut it into triangles, and now we've elongated them to 25 centimeters. I think my prediction would be that this one's gonna be good, 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 this one's gonna be good. This one might be good, and then from here on, crap. But we'll see. Here they are, wrapped tightly like buns. Not really, like croissants. These ones are the bad ones, these ones are the good ones. So we know who's going to get presents at Christmas. Anyway, I'm going to put them in to prove for 30 minutes and then we're going to put them in the oven. Yeah, I, I heated the oven up slightly. I'm going to prove the croissants in here. I'm just going to keep an eye on them to make sure that no butter is melting. Otherwise I'll just pull them out quickly. I'm going to leave the door open a bit just to ensure the temperature is not too hot. And then hopefully we'll have some beautiful risen croissants. But if not, I've got a backup batch proving somewhere else to see if they prove they're better. Just forgot, I had to add uh, the egg glaze. So I've taken them out and put on the egg glaze and they look shiny. Over stuff, work so hard on this. Let's see if it tastes any good. Don't eat it. Why not? Why would you eat it? It's cool. No, it hasn't. <laughs> it's like you've never made croissants before. Not something I'd eat intentionally ever, but it wasn't bad. The last ones I made were a little flat, a little small, and didn't have the right colour. That may have been because I didn't add the egg, but it was also because of the cooking time. And because our oven, as I found out, cooks about 25 degrees lower than what it says it's doing. So these ones I'm gonna cook for a bit longer at a higher temperature. And if you look, whoops, if you look, 
they look a lot better doing our cooking squats. Oh yeah, they got the colour there. Let's turn it down. Here are the croissants. They've just come out of the oven. This is my last two batches. Definitely a better colour. Some ones, some of them, that one looks really good. The insides, this one doesn't look particularly great, but they're better ones than that one. So I, I see which ones, I'm sure there'll be better ones. And also, from the last batch, as they cooled down, I think they became more flaky and croissanty, so I'm gonna leave them for a bit. Like these ones, I think there's a lot of promise on those ones to become a very nice flaky croissant. So let's leave them and then we'll come back. Check out the layers on this one. I was quite like this one I gave to Grace, but one of the better ones, I think. I slightly put the oven too high, so the outside looks really good, but the inside is slightly dough when you eat it. You can't see it on camera, but definitely should have turned the oven down a bit more. But I'm pretty happy with the results overall. Hey, Gideon. Hello. Grace wants to see a picture of your croissants. Oh, I, I, I can't, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know. I've just I've just put them in to prove. I don't know where to prove them. I had them in the oven, but that was gonna definitely be too hot. So I moved them outside to cool down. I think I'm just gonna prove them in the house. It's like 25 degrees Celsius. The house is like 20 probably. So I think 20. I don't want to risk because you don't want to be too hot. Yeah. So I had dough problems from step one, right? So basically throughout yeah. the entire process, it just completely got screwed up. Um, because the dough I think that was predictable from, from yeah. the flour. It, it, flour. Wasn't, it wasn't the flour. It turns out I just needed more liquids in it. Um, but basically, the dough is too crumbly. So then uh, it, it like... the butter had too much water in it. Uh, I, 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 possibly. <laughs> but, but then the point was that when I folded in the butter, um, it, it wouldn't like fold properly and... Uh, and I tried to roll up the croissants and it just it just wasn't working. Uh, so, this was so predictable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to have another crack at it. I don't know when. Um, but... I think I might do it like every weekend because it takes like two or three days. And it's quite a nice thing to you just do in the morning every day. Yeah. What we can do is just end the video here, right? And have this be part one and we can be like, this is the trial run. Uh, and okay. then part two is like the second practice. <laughs> Like the run. You didn't even, so you didn't even get to the part where you had to cut the croissants. Uh, well, I tried. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I, Guillaume recommended some flour for the next time. Oh, okay. Dude. Guillaume texted me last night going. You got the right idea with the flower, key and screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Guillaume might have been onto something there. But yeah, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh, I, I know a place where I can get some good flour. Uh, and I seem to remember a certain yesterday when you said, "Pish posh." I think you're reading too much into this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then you're, and then you're sneaky. Ah, oh, I got the YouTube video. Ha 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 ha. Well, the, yeah. Uh, I, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. What did the chef say in the video? He just said flour. <laughs> we'll call this part one, right? Yeah. And then part two, we'll do the second run through, which hopefully should be a lot smoother on my end. Yeah, definitely. Next time it's going to be really quick and smooth. Yeah. And then uh, part three is 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 making them for Guillaume and uh, and having him try them. Okay, so I know I literally just said that the video was over, but I had another go at the croissants and they actually turned out quite nicely. So have a look. Here's a quick montage.
tastes like a croissant. It's light, it's fluffy. It's just flat. Okay. Look, it's definitely got the layers. Okay, so the second batch was decent. It was a bit flat, but that's because I proofed it at too high of a temperature. So next time, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for watching, and come back for part two where we will be improving it.